So you've decided to move right here to the Woodlands, Texas. Well, I don't blame you. There's a reason that it is consistently ranked the number one suburb in the entire country. I mean, look around, it's a gorgeous day here. There's tons of amenities and plenty to do for you and your family, but maybe you haven't decided where in the Woodlands you wanna live. If you didn't know already, the Woodlands is actually broken up into nine different villages. And there are a lot of details and nuances about these villages that we wanna to explain to you so that you can help narrow it down. So in today's video, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna walk through the nine villages and we're gonna to talk to you about what you can expect in each village. We're gonna show you the differences. We're gonna cover the price range of the different homes in each of the villages. We're gonna to talk to you about the size of the homes in all the villages, as well as the age of the homes. And we're also gonna walk you through which homes and which villages are zoned to the different high schools here. And as always, we're also gonna show you the location and we're gonna walk you through which locations are the best to live right here in the Woodlands, Texas. So stick around and let's get after it right now. So before we dive into the differences between all nine villages, I wanted to talk to you about some of the similarities. So if you haven't already, you can go check out our vlog on the Woodlands after this video. It really will go into detail about all the amazing amenities that the Woodlands has to offer. But a quick overview is the things that you're gonna find similar about the nine villages is that all nine villages are part of the Woodlands Master Plan. So the Woodlands Master Plan is a 28,000 acre development that started back in 1974 with its first village. Now, it was all developed by Howard Hughes, who's still finishing the development to this day. At this point, most of the Woodlands is completely built out. And so as you drive through the Woodlands, no matter what village you are in, here are some of the things that you can expect. You can expect it all to feel very cohesive. So as you drive from one village to another, you might not notice the difference at all. You're gonna be driving down the major roads and you're not gonna see anything. You're just gonna see trees. And that was done intentionally. They actually left nature preserves on the side of all the major thoroughfares so that as you drive through the woodlands, it feels different than anywhere else. It's really not until you get onto the residential streets or into the shopping centers that you start to notice the difference between the different villages. And that's just really gonna come down to the age of the homes in the different villages and the size of the homes in the different villages. So other things that you can expect that are gonna be similar is the entire Woodlands is gonna share over 400 miles of hike and bike trails and all of those interconnect through all nine villages. So no matter where you're at, you can actually get to the other villages by walking or biking. And then one other thing that they all have in common is they're all gonna have a ton of parks, too many parks. Anywhere you look, you're within two or three minutes of a park. It doesn't matter if you're in the most expensive village or the least expensive village, you get treated equally here, you're gonna have access to tons of amazing parks. And then also what we covered in our vlog is you're gonna have all these amazing common amenities up here along I-45 in town center. Now, as far as the differences in each of the villages and which one's gonna be best for you, that's really gonna depend on your everyday life. You're gonna to want to take into consideration where you're working, whether or not you're working from home or having to commute. If you work at the Exxon campus, you might wanna live in a different village than if you commute to downtown. And so we're gonna go and dive into each of the nine villages. We're gonna head back to the office. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty and show you which village would be best for you. Okay, so we're back up here at the office. And before we dive in, if this is your first time to our channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about living right here in the Woodlands, Texas or anywhere in Houston, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications. That way we can keep you up to date. My name is Kyler Ferris and our team gets calls and texts and emails every single day from people just like you that are looking to move to the Woodlands. So if that is you, don't be shy, pick up the phone and give us a call, shoot us a text or send us a quick email. That way we can help you make a smooth move right here to the Woodlands, Texas. Now, before we dive in, we're about to get into each of these nine villages. Um, I did wanna to touch a little bit more on what all we're gonna be covering. So we're gonna start with the location. We're gonna show you where on a map these villages are located because location is very important when you are deciding which village you wanna be in. Uh, we're also gonna show you the, the range of prices, the range of sizes, and the range of ages. Now, it's important to note, I think one of the biggest misconceptions about the villages in the Woodlands is that the villages are very different. They definitely have their differences, but they we've already covered, they have a ton of similarities. And so 
A lot of people think, oh, well, what's the nice village? Well, it depends. There are $200,000 houses in some villages, and in the same village, there's $5 million houses, which you'll see here in just a second. And so you really do have to dig into the weeds and start to parcel through you know, which neighborhoods in these villages have homes that are in your price range, in your size range, in your age range that are gonna meet your needs. So let's get into the first village. Grogan's Mill is going to be the first village that was established here in the Woodlands. And Grogan's Mill is also gonna be the oldest. And so in 1974, they started to develop Grogan's Mill. And if you look at Grogan's Mill on a map, you're gonna see that it's definitely in one of the more convenient locations out of all the villages in the Woodlands. It's right up along I-45. And whenever we talk about the front of the Woodlands, we're referencing the whole section of the Woodlands that borders the freeway. And as you work your way further and further west, you're going to end up in the back of the Woodlands. And so Grogan's Mill is located right up at the front of the Woodlands. And Grogan's Mill is gonna have a wide variety of different housing sizes, ages, uh, and price ranges. And so when we're looking at Grogan's Mill, you can get some older, smaller homes, as small as 1,100 square feet, uh, and you can pick those up for around two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Now, are these nice homes? I wouldn't necessarily say that that's the case. They probably are in need of some serious updates at that price range. Uh, and then you're going to also swing to the far other side. You're going to have homes on the golf course that range all the way up to four point five million dollars. Now. I'm using data of home sales in the past 365 days for this video, and so that's gonna kinda give us a really good range. Now, like I said, the homes started being built in uh, 1974, and so that they're gonna range from 1974, and they really stopped building most of the homes in Grogan's Mill around 1997. Now, that's not to say that there haven't been teardowns since or some empty lots that eventually got developed. You will find the occasional straggler. So whenever I say there's no new construction in the woodlands, I mean that there's barely any new construction in the woodlands. And so um, you've gonna, you're gonna have the same established trees in Grogan's Mill as you're gonna have anywhere else. Grogan's Mill does have a unique neighborhood in it called Grogan's Point, which is actually like the older estate section here in the woodlands. And so you've got some larger acreage lots. Um, they range from like half acre on the small side up to I think two acres and there's they, they border a golf course there as well. So anyways, um, Grogan's Mill, one of the older ones, really nice, great location, and it is gonna be zoned to College Park. So if you're wanting your kids to go to College Park High School, Grogan's Mill is a fantastic option. And as far as amenities go in Grogan's Mill, the biggest amenity is gonna be the Woodlands Resort and Country Club. It's a very nice resort. You can stay there. There's a hotel and convention center. Uh, they're gonna have a water park for the kids. They're gonna have tennis, uh, golf, a golf course. So it really is a hot spot. I would say it's the biggest amenity in Grogan's Mill. Panther Creek is gonna be the second oldest village in the Woodlands. And what I love most about Panther Creek is gonna be its fantastic location. Panther Creek is actually located very centrally to the Woodlands. So it's just west of Lake Woodlands and you're even gonna have some homes that are on Lake Woodlands. And so you're gonna have a really wide price range of homes in most of the villages, but specifically in Panther Creek. You've got $6 million waterfront homes and then you're gonna have um, you know, some fixer uppers as low as $280,000. Now, the bulk of the homes in most of the villages in the Woodlands are gonna be catered towards uh, middle-class families. It's not all ultra luxury, but I would also say there really aren't very many low priced homes in the Woodlands. There just aren't. If they are low priced, they're probably very, very, very small. And so as we look at Panther Creek, um, it was built from 1979 through about 2005. So they started development in 77, but most of the age of the homes when you're actually searching in Panther Creek specifically are gonna be from that 79 through 2005. Now that's a big range. So obviously, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have options when it comes to the age of the homes. And then the size range is gonna vary pretty significantly too. Uh, we've seen homes as low as 1,000 square feet, which is definitely rare. And then we've seen homes as big as 10,000 square feet, which are gonna be those massive lakefront mansions. One of the better features of Panther Creek, probably its most notable amenity, 
aside from its very close proximity to town center and all of the convenient shopping in Hughes Landing, is gonna be North Shore Park. North Shore Park is definitely one of the bigger parks in the Woodlands. I would say it stands out amongst the rest. It's located right along Lake Woodlands and there is tons for families to do up at North Shore Park. Not only is it a park, you also have the rowing center right there on Lake Woodlands and you're going to have the uh, uh, the marathons that are people running and the Ironmans, a lot of those are gonna operate out of North Shore Park, at least the swimming portion. And so it, they're also gonna have tons of family events for everyone in the Woodlands, not just people that live in Panther Creek, but those are gonna be hosted up at North Shore Park. And as far as schools go in Panther Creek, Panther Creek is gonna be one of the villages that actually is zoned to two of different schools. Now, you don't have the option to go to College Park or the Woodlands, but the dividing line bisects through Panther Creek. So you might live on one side of Panther Creek and go to College Park, or you might live on the other side of Panther Creek and go to the Woodlands High School. Cochran's Crossing is the most central village in the Woodlands. When you pull it up on a map, it really looks like it is the heart and soul of the Woodlands. And Cochran's Crossing, not only does it have a great location, it's got a lot of really amazing features. So like many of the other villages, you're gonna see quite a difference in price ranges and age ranges. Cochran's Crossing has homes as low as 280,000, and the most recent expensive sale was all the way up to 4 million. Once again, most of the homes aren't at either of those prices. The bulk of all the homes that you're gonna see in the Woodlands, and specifically Co Cochran's Crossing, are really gonna be in that 500 to a million mark. They're gonna be your standard family homes uh, with access to really great public schools, all the hike and bike trails. And so Cochran's Crossing being right in the middle of the Woodlands, you're really close to everything. You've got quick access up to the freeway. It's about a 10 minute drive to all the amazing amenities up at Town Center, but you're also not too far from the back of the Woodlands. So you can really kind of pick which shopping center you want to go to. Now, each of these villages is gonna have their own shopping center. And so Cochran's Crossing's shopping center is called Cochran's Crossing. And so you're gonna have your, your grocery store up there. You're gonna have all of your mom and pop shops, restaurants, Kalachi places, if you don't know what Kalachis are, look them up or just come and visit. But you're gonna have everything right there in your village in Cochran's Crossing. And so size range of homes, uh, once again, very wide range. The lowest we've seen is about 1,300 square feet all the way up to 8,300 square feet. So there really is a little bit for everyone in Cochran's Crossing. As far as schools go in Cochran's Crossing, it's also gonna be another village where it's divided. So half of the student population is going to go to College Park and half of it is going to go to the Woodlands. And it really all just depends on where exactly in the village that you live. Now, the most notable amenity in this village is gonna be the Woodlands Country Club. It is one of many country clubs located right here in the Woodlands, but it, it seems like it's kind of the main country club in the middle of the Woodlands. And so it's really great amenity, great place for you and the family to go up. They've got pools, they've got a restaurant, and then they've obviously got the golf course. And the other amenity that Cochran's Crossing features is actually the Woodlands High School, though it's home of the Woodlands High School. So like I said, not everybody will go to the Woodlands High School if you live in Cochran's Crossing, but the actual physical location of the Woodlands High School is right in the middle of the Woodlands, right in Cochran's Crossing. Town Center is one of the nine villages here in the Woodlands, and we're actually gonna include East Shore in this segment because East Shore is a very small section of the Woodlands located right up against the front side of Lake Woodlands. And it's kind of a hot topic, uh, between realtors here because we say that there's nine villages in the woodlands, but East Shore, we don't know exactly where to categorize it. Some people wanna call it its own village because it very much is its own thing. But for the sake of keeping it as nine villages in the woodlands, we're gonna lump Town Center and East Shore together. So Town Center is going to be primarily commercial. There's really not a ton of residential uh, development that took place there. This is where you're gonna find the Woodlands Mall. This is where you're gonna find the Waterway, Market Street, and tons of your restaurants. And so this is really the entertainment uh, area of the Woodlands. You've got the Woodlands Pavilion up here as well. And so Town Center really is a village that services all the other villages. So no matter where you live in the Woodlands, you're going to have the opportunity to come up and use all of these Woodlands amenities. In fact, you could live anywhere and come to the Woodlands and utilize the mall and the shopping and the very nice restaurants. So 
There are a couple housing options that are more urban. So they actually have these really cool waterfront uh, condos and townhomes, these very nice brownstones. Um, they're definitely on the higher price, but you're kind of paying to get uh, an urban living experience in the suburbs. And so it's very unique, uh, definitely a different architectural style than a lot of the other areas you're gonna see in the woodlands. And then as we talk about East Shore, what's really cool about East Shore, East Shore has some of the coolest houses in all of the woodlands. Um, you're gonna have a little bit of a French undertone in a lot of the architecture over there, and you really do get some uh, some really amazing options over there if you have the money to afford it. And so homes in East Shore are gonna start around $700,000 for a town home, and a lot of what you're paying for, other than cool architecture, is the location. The location of East Shore is fantastic. It doesn't get much more convenient. You're not right up against the freeway, but you're very close and you're right next to all the amazing Woodlands amenities. And then the prices in East Shore, they're actually gonna go uh, quite high. They're gonna go all the way up to five, six million dollars for a home, home in East Shore. And so uh, as far as schools go, East Shore is all gonna be zoned to College Park. And so if I haven't already clarified this, the dividing line for the Woodlands and College Park, it's actually a vertical dividing line. So it runs north to south and so, the entire north-south section of the woodlands that borders I-45, the front of the woodlands is gonna go to College Park, which includes East Shore and Grogan's Mill and College Park. Um, and so, and then the back of the woodlands is gonna go uh, to the Woodlands High School. So East Shore or Town Center, if you live anywhere there, your kids are gonna go to College Park. College Park is a village located in the northeast corner of the woodlands. It's located right along I-45, and it happens to be the only village that actually has a section of it located on the east side of I-45. Now, College Park is actually made up of two major neighborhoods, and so the one that's on the east side of I-45 is called Harper's Landing, and then the one that's on the west side of I-45, located near College Park High School, is gonna be called Windvale. Now, there's not quite as big of a price range gap over in the College Park area. Um, most of the homes over there are gonna be in the four to 700,000s, with, with a few exceptions. We've seen some homes as low as 250, 300 that are real fixer uppers. And then on the high side in the College Park area, in, uh, in just one neighborhood specifically, you've got homes all the way up to about $1.6 million. Now, all of College Park is going to be zoned to College Park High School. So if you live in that village, um, you, that's the only high school option there. You're not gonna end up at the Woodlands High School. Now, as far as major amenities go, you're gonna have a really big shopping area located along College Park. I would say it's definitely one of the bigger shopping destinations outside of you know the Woodlands Mall here in the Woodlands. You're gonna have your bigger anchor tenants there. You've got your Lowe's, you've got your Walmart, your at-home store. And so a lot of those major amenities that are located right along I-45 are in College Park. Alden Bridge is gonna be one of the largest villages here in the Woodlands. It runs along the entire northern portion of the Woodlands and heads out west as you head out towards Magnolia. So along the north side of it, if you pull it up on a map, you're gonna see that 1488 really is the northern border. And back when they initially developed the woodlands, you weren't able to connect through to 1488. And so the woodlands was very landlocked and I think that was done intentionally. But as the area has grown, they've recognized the need for better traffic flow. And so now you have an access point along 1488. What that's also done is it's taken Alden Bridge from having one main shopping center to it actually has two village shopping centers. So in Alden Bridge, you're gonna have the Windvale Shopping Center and then you're gonna have the Alden Bridge Village Shopping Center. Now, Alden Bridge Village being one of the bigger villages, I would say it accommodates the most uh, median housing here in the Woodlands. And so you're not gonna have any crazy inexpensive homes or really any crazy expensive homes. So. The widest range that we've seen is the low end 275, once again for a fixer upper, up to about 1.6 million. So you don't have these ultra luxury homes hanging out in Alden Bridge. Now, as far as size goes, we've seen homes range from 1,600 square feet all the way up to 6,500 square feet. And as far as the age range goes, Alden Bridge homes range from about 1983, and they really finished building out Alden Bridge around 2004. So pretty good 
healthy age range of homes there. Now, this is also a village that is split based on the different public schools. And so half of the village will go to College Park and half will go to the Woodlands, depending on where the exact home you purchase resides. And so major amenities in Alden Bridge are going to include Lakeside Park. It was actually one of my favorite parks to go to growing up. They have a really cool skate park there, which is a huge feature. And then there's also a reservoir back there to go fishing. So anyways, uh, Lakeside Park, really cool amenity. And that wraps up Alden Bridge. Indian Springs is going to be the smallest of the nine villages. It's located pretty central to the woodlands. It's on the south side of the woodlands and Woodlands Parkway is the major thoroughfare that kind of runs along the bordering edge of Indian Springs. Now, Indian Springs being uh, the smallest, it's also one of the newer villages. It's not the newest. Um, it's going to have a wide range of prices and sizes as well. So you've got homes that are small 1100 square foot fixer uppers from about $250,000 all the way up to your larger homes, $2.7 million, about 7,000 square feet. So good range. And Indian Springs was developed really from 1984 through about 2004. So uh, the homes are older, but you know, you've got some that are a little bit, a little bit newer in that 2004 range. Now, as far as amenities go, Indian Springs is, because it's one of the smaller villages in the woodlands, it's got close proximity to a lot of the amenities in other villages, but it really doesn't have any standout amenities aside from its parks. It's got a couple major parks, just like all the other villages that are great to go hang out with the family, take the kids up to the park. And as far as high schools, all of Indian Springs is gonna be zoned to the Woodlands High School. Now, even though Indian Springs is the smallest village, it still has its own Indian Springs Village Shopping Center. So you're still gonna have all of your convenient shopping amenities located inside of your village. You're not gonna have to leave Indian Springs to go and get your groceries. Sterling Ridge is gonna be your village that is furthest back in the woodlands. It's the furthest away from I-45. In fact, when you look at it on a map, it borders 2978. So if you have any need for a commute to Tomball, it's definitely gonna be your most convenient village to live in if you're headed out that direction. Now, if you are needing to commute into downtown Houston for work, this is gonna be one of the more inconvenient villages because in traffic it can still take you 20 to 25 minutes to get from Sterling Ridge up to I-45 before you make your commute down into the Houston area. Now, Sterling Ridge is one of the nicer villages. It seems like the average price point in Sterling Ridge is a little bit higher than most of the other villages. You're gonna still have homes ranging from 300,000 all the way up to 2.5 million. And the size range is gonna be from about 1,600 square feet all the way up through 8,600 square feet. And the age of the homes in Sterling Ridge is gonna be a little bit newer than some of the other villages. Uh, most development took place between 2001 and 2018. Now, Sterling Ridge is one of the bigger villages and it really gets two shopping centers. So you've got the villages of Sterling Ridge main shopping center and then in the back of the woodlands, right where Woodlands Parkway and 2978 intersect, you're gonna have your super Walmart and a bunch of other strip centers back there as well. Now, when we're talking about amenities in Sterling Ridge, the two that stand out the most are gonna be the Gary Player course, which is part of the Woodlands Country Club, but it's a separate course than some of the others throughout the Woodlands. So that's gonna be located here in Sterling Ridge. You've got homes that are backing up to the golf course. And then the other key amenity here is gonna be Terremont Park. Uh, this is a massive park. It's got a nice open space, big old hill for you to go and play on. It's got a skate park for the kids. So it really is one of the bigger parks in the back of the woodlands. So a really nice feature to have right here in Sterling Ridge. Now, as far as schools go, all of Sterling Ridge is gonna be zoned to the Woodlands High School. So it's not split between the Woodlands and College Park. So if you live in Sterling Ridge, your kids will go to the Woodlands High School. The newest village in the Woodlands is going to be Creekside. Now, initially, whenever the Woodlands was being developed, they were only planning on eight villages, but eventually they decided to build a ninth. And the ninth that they chose was Creekside. And so Creekside has a little bit of a natural barrier from the rest of the Woodlands. If you're to look at Creekside on a map, you're gonna see that it's actually just south of a nature preserve. And so it's a little bit segregated from the rest of the woodlands, but it still has a very similar feel. Now, 
The minor differences with Creekside are gonna be that there are some sections of Creekside that don't feel quite as wooded as the woodlands. It feels like it's a little bit more thinned out, but there's still an ample amount of trees, still more trees than most areas around Houston. The other thing uh, that's unique about Creekside is it's gonna have the newest homes. So Creekside's homes range from about 2007 all the way up through 2022. So if you're looking for a very new home, your best bet in the woodlands is gonna be Creekside. And Creekside, as far as amenities go, they actually have the newest shopping center as well. And so you're gonna get everything. You're gonna get your anchor tenant grocery stores with an HEB. You're gonna have Sinopolis, which is like a luxury movie theater uh, with an open bar so that you can, or a full bar, not an open bar. And so you can go and enjoy a drink or dinner with the family and watch a movie right there. And then the home prices out in Creekside are gonna range from about $350,000 all the way up to around 1.9 million. Now, the key distinction in Creekside, and this is the only village that is different than all the others in this sense, is it is zoned to Tomball ISD. And so, unlike the other eight villages that you either go to College Park or go to the Woodlands High School, if you're in Creekside, chances are you're gonna go to Tomball ISD. And so, that is a key difference. So, if you're trying to get your kids in the Woodlands High School or College Park, then Creekside isn't gonna be your best bet. Now we've covered the nine villages, but there is actually a bonus village that I wanna run by you real quick. And so if you're familiar with the woodlands, you've probably heard of Carlton Woods. Carlton Woods is actually broken up into two separate gated neighborhoods. So there's one Carlton Woods that's located within the confines of Sterling Ridge, but it really operates as its own entity. And so Within the gates of Carlton Woods, it's a fully gated neighborhood in the woodlands, but it's gonna have its own association. And so the one that's located in Sterling Ridge is called the Jack Nicholas course. And then there's a separate Carlton Woods, which is also gated, and it's going to have the Fazio course, and it's located in Creekside. Although they really do operate as their own entities. And you can tell the second you, you drive through the gates, uh, everything changes. These are gonna be the largest homes in the woodlands. Um, and they're going to have massive lots. They're, most of them are on one acre lots and they've got everything pools. And homes here are gonna range anywhere from about 1.5 million all the way up to 10 plus million for some of these. So it really is the nicest neighborhood in the woodlands. So we didn't wanna leave that one out, but it isn't technically one of the nine villages. So it's such a pretty day here in the woodlands that I had to get back out of the office. I'm about to go hang out with the family here in a minute and just enjoy everything that the woodlands has to offer. So hopefully this video was insightful. Hopefully it helped you narrow down which of the villages might be right for you or wrong for you. And as you start to narrow it down, that's what we're here for. So like we always say, if you have questions, give us a call, shoot us a text or send us an email. That way we can help you pick the best village for you and your family. We'll see you guys in the next video.